said last month that uh, I had something ready and I would post it this month. Seems like every time I do that, I end up uh, changing it. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do this time as well. I'll post that next month because it it, um, it dawned on me that uh, September the 11th is coming up, and that's actually the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, uh, September 11th, 2001. And I haven't really talked about anything like that on this channel before. And even though it's been done to death, uh, the where were you when uh, scenario, you know, I grew up with it with everybody saying, where were you when Kennedy was assassinated? And I guess this is... Well, we have a couple. We have the, the Challenger uh, disaster. People kind of do that with that. But then uh, September 11th, that was kind of my generation's Pearl Harbor, if you will. And so I thought I would I would do that if you if you want to share where you were on September the 11th, 2001. If, if you were old enough to remember it or would, would like to share your story, please do so in the comment section. I just thought I would talk about where I was at that particular uh, moment in time or that particular time period because um, you know prior to that prior to September 11th 2001 I think people from my generation and and around that age we had kind of convinced ourselves here in, in the United States anyway that we that nobody was going to get to us we would look at history and look at things like Pearl Harbor and say, well, that, that could never happen today. Uh, our military is far too advanced and, and, and far too uh, you know, above everybody else that you know, we would see things coming a mile away. and It would just never happen. <clears throat> and so you add that shock in with just the, the uh, I mean, take... Okay, but let me, and let me pause here. I'm going to leave politics out of this. I'm going to leave conspiracy theories out of this. I ask that you do the same in the comments. But uh, the day that happened, it, it, at that time, uh, I was working for uh, I was working building airplane seats, and so my job was actually directly related to the airline industry. And at that time, I, well, the whole time I worked there, I worked the swing shift. So I would go in at, like, most of the time I was there, I'd go in at 4 in the afternoon. I usually worked overtime, so I wouldn't get off until 2.30 in the morning, uh, which put me home, getting home about 3. A typical day for me, I, I would get home about 3, grab a bite to eat, clean up, uh, watch a little bit of ABC World News overnight. And sometime, between, usually by 4 o'clock, if I, I had not already fallen asleep, I would just shut everything off and lay down until I until I fell asleep. And I typically tried to wake up uh, somewhere between 10 and 11. Well, that particular morning, I actually woke up very early. And the main reason I, I know I woke up quite early is because I actually woke up to the attacks uh, shortly after the second plane hit. I believe it hit uh, about 9.03 uh, New York time which would be 8.03 here. And so I think I woke up about 9 that morning, which is like a very, very early for me. And I saw, so I woke up to it. Uh, both, both planes had already hit. Smoke boiling out of the, the World Trade Center was the image um, I woke up to. And of course, we nobody really knew much of anything at the time. Uh, I... I tuned in just literally minutes after it was pretty well confirmed because up, up to that time I, don't, I think they had thought well this, was this just a pilot error was it you know what was going on and after the second plane hit it was quite obvious that it was not an accident of any kind it was it was an attack but we still didn't know who we didn't know why we didn't know if there were going to be more and so that's what I wake up to is uh, is this chaos and and typically when you know when I would wake up I would I would watch TV for about 20 minutes and then I would shut the TV off and I would get up and do my morning things and go to the bathroom and you know and whatnot and then get ready for the day. And uh, online was still a fairly new thing <laughs> at the time, but I would you know jump on check my email blah blah blah. And so I'm sitting there watching what's going on 
And I, the first thing I can remember thinking about were, were the people in the buildings. Just all of those, not knowing you know, exactly how many people worked in those buildings. But, I mean, I knew it had to be thousands. And thinking they did, they were just people that just went to work that day and, and now this. And especially the people on the higher floors that, um, at that point, they pretty well knew they were going to die. Even if they survived the, the crash itself, they knew they were going to die. And so I'm just sitting on the edge of the bed thinking about that. And then I did something that I still, to this day, I, I don't know why. I guess I just kind of, my, my body, my brain just went into autopilot, uh, if, if that's a poor choice of words. But I, uh, I turned the TV off because that's normally what I would do after I had watched TV for about 15 or 20 minutes. And I got up and, and you know, went to the bathroom and, and this, that, and the other. And I guess it just it was just force of habit. But I did cut my morning routine a little bit short, and I did jump online a little sooner. Uh, I guess the first, uh, the first hints that the Internet was starting to take over, and I was going to check my email, and that's you know, AOL, of all things. I was on AOL, and of course, you know, you had a set where the news thing, I can't remember, I can't remember what my opening screen was, if I used Yahoo, or if I used something else, but that was the first thing I saw when everything came up, is the towers had collapsed. It, they had collapsed while I was uh, using the bathroom and, and doing all of that, and I thought, holy crap, you know, so I messaged my cousin, who I knew had to be watching all of this. And, of course, he didn't know anything uh, more than anybody else at that point, but he had been watching it and f filled me in a little bit on, you know, what little bit I had not seen. And, of course, at that moment, you, you didn't know. You didn't know if, you didn't know were, were there going to be more attacks. Was it just New York? Were they going to hit California? Were they going to hit Washington, D.C.? Were they going to hit Texas? Were they going to hit, uh, you know, who knows where? How big was this? And of course, I had to leave. I typically left for work about three in the afternoon, and so I just. And by the time I left, they had identified the the two planes that were used, and then I saw that one of them was an American Airlines plane. And where I worked, of course, uh, like I say, I built, worked building airplane seats, and our bread and butter at the time was American Airlines. And of course, you know, you can't help but start kind of going into selfish mode is how is this going to affect me? Uh, especially when you, when you worked in the industry I was in at the time. And by the time I got to work, I walked through the door and the first thing I see is stacks and stacks, you know, boxes and, and parts and all that. Uh, stacked to the side, stacked in quarters with do not run stickers on them. All American Airlines parts. And so you just knew and like I say, you can't help but be selfish in that moment. You knew it was going to affect your job. You knew it was going to affect, affect the job of the people that you worked with. And uh, to flash forward a minute, and within two months, uh, pretty much everybody I worked with was gone. They had been laid off. Just to, to finish off the work-related part, um, yeah, that all, we, we never really fully recovered from that. It, it, it almost shut us down. But on, on more personal notes, uh, around here, it was, it was a little like what's been going on the last couple of years with coronavirus. Of course, you know, all the NFL games that, that next weekend were canceled, all the Major League Baseball games, all the major sporting events were put on pause. Uh, the borders were closed. Obviously, all the airplanes were grounded. No travel at all. And that's the way it was for a couple of weeks, I guess. And I can remember uh, just for about a week, it was, it was like everybody was just kind of in a daze or walking around in a haze because you just didn't know what to do with yourself. But for me, after about that first week, that's when I really first had those first feelings, okay, we need to go ahead and, and get our S together and get things back to as close to normal as we can. But, you know, basically everything that was... Uh, that people used as a distraction from reality was put on pause. And so you had nothing to do but 
kind of dwell in that reality. And then, of course, you know, as happens with everything, you had people taking sides and the conspiracy theories. And for, for a while, we were all kind of on a united front. But, of course, that didn't last. Because we can't have that, can we? But, yeah, that's where, that's where I was, September the 11th, 2001. And, uh, it seems kind of odd now that, uh, that it is 20 years gone by. Uh, but again, I would I would ask that you just uh, keep things respectful in the comments. Please don't get political. Everybody has their opinions on that. I have my opinions on on what went on, and I seriously doubt you're going to present anything new to me that I haven't seen or heard or thought of myself over the last 20 years. So let's just leave it as a. Uh, a more personal thing is where where were you on September the 11th, 2001, and um, how did you first get the news, and where did you go from there? Okay, well, kind of a reflective writing with James this time around. Okay, normally at the at the end of a writing with James, uh, what I've been doing lately, what I've been trying to do, it seems like I can't get it going. Uh, I try to uh, promote a channel that is under a thousand subscribers. Um, maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but it just kind of seems inappropriate. It's, it's uh, kind of too hard of a, of a transition to go from, let's talk about this dark day, to, hey, how about checking this channel out, you know? Uh, so instead, I'm going to leave a link up in the upper right-hand corner uh, to a song by Derek Nelson. Uh, this is something that he posted uh, for the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 uh, attacks, a song called uh, Phone Call. Uh, go check that out, listen to that. All right, well, thank you for coming along for the ride. Thank you for listening. Uh, again, feel free to share your comments, but please do so in a respectful manner. Uh, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Not necessarily in that order. And I will see you next time.